Genesis chapter 30, verses 1. Let's read one, let's go. Bear Jacob no children. Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Read it again. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob, next verse, Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel and said, Am I in God's stead who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Am I the one? Am I God? Praise God. Am I God who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Am I God? Am I God? Am I God? Am I God? The man is asking the woman. The sister has given birth to children and this one starts to envy her sister. Praise God. And the man asks the woman, Am I God? Because you don't get it. It's not what I can do for you. It is what God can do for you. So am I God? You see, let's first go to this story. There's something I need to share with you before I probably go deeper into what I'm sharing. It's the way God favors people who are in the most disadvantaged places. Are you hearing me? And that is why if you go before in Genesis 29, 30, the Bible speaks uh, and tells us, and uh, the Bible says, he went also into Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven years. This was who? Jacob. Jacob loved Rachel. You remember? So he has a, a father-in-law who is a what? A trickster, like him also. You understand? He fell in the same thing, in the anointing. What will that family, eh? <laughs> Laban was a thief. His sister Rebecca was also too smart. You understand? But then the, the son-in-law is also, he's a trickster. And then he marries a Rachel who steals stuff from her father. I don't know. <laughs> family or not. So he, he, he went also into Rachel and he loved also Rachel more than Leah. This was he loving who? Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. And then the next verse says, listen, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. You understand? There is a way God blesses people who are hated. If you want to see God bless somebody, you start to hate them. If you want to see God working in your life, let somebody stand in your way to hate you. God has a way of loving people who are hated. Me, they hate me. I don't have favor. That is already a favor. <laughs> you don't get what I'm saying. That is already a favor. Tell your neighbor to be hated is favor. Because in the Christian faith, all things work for our sake. That through the thanksgiving of many, this might redound to the glory of God. For which cause, the Bible says, we faint not. That's the reason why we don't give up. I don't know if you understand. He says, all things are for our sex. And the Bible says that through the thanksgiving, the Bible says that, that the burden of grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound the glory of God. And that is why the Bible says, the next verse, for which cause we what? We find not. That's the reason why you should not lose peace that somebody has an issue with you. Are, are you with me? Oh, banange, bampairiza. No, but why did he say? Are you hearing me? You understand what I'm trying to tell you? The Bible says the mother were afflicted. The mother were what? Come on. The mother were afflicted. The mother what? They multiplied. You are going to multiply more in affliction. Praise God. Leah was not loved. And the Bible says, and the Lord saw that the man didn't love Leah. Are you hearing me? And then he was opened her womb. That means Leah was barren. The only reason why Leah got pregnant was because she was hated. When the Lord saw that Leah was one, hated, he opened her womb immediately. Hey, you know, 
I've, I've seen families where there are women who look after children of men who they didn't produce. And I don't know why history repeats itself every time. They mistreat children who they didn't produce. You understand? Their biological children sit on dining table. The children of the strange woman, they sit down. I swear, God will bless them. Those are things you can only speak in Virtuous Woman Conference. And if you're here and you have a certain kid in your family who you did not produce from your very womb and you know the man dumped that kid there, treat them exactly the way you treat your child. Because if you don't trust me, they'll get jobs before your children, they'll get married before your children, they'll get successful before your children. I know why some of you can't say amen. No. No. Okay, let us put it the other way around. If you were raised in a family and you were a stepdaughter and your stepmother treated you badly, compare yourself, you're better. Am I lying? You're better than all the ones you were raised with. Why? Because there is a way God knows how to reach out to people you hate. Anti women love hating for people. You understand? It's just in you. Hallelujah. But should it fall on you one day? Are you hearing me? That man has to tell you that I have a kid. Trust me. Treat that child the same way you'll treat your children. That is the only test station that can guarantee the future of your child. If you treat the stepchild right. But the Lord watches from above. There are women here, there is a way you treat... Hey, I know why you're not saying amen. There are women here, there is a way you treat what? Those who are the children. You understand? And it falls down. Poo, poo, poo. You understand? Tell your neighbor, God has a way of blessing them that are hated. Yes. And I tell you as a woman, if you're here and you've ever done it, in this conference, maybe that's the reason why you've been waiting since morning, to repent. Change your mind. Tell God I'm sorry. I say, tell God I'm sorry. Mugambi, praise God. And start to treat them right. That's the godly way. Love. Hallelujah. Loving those we cannot love. Praise God. And trust me, it's not easy to love a child who is not your own child. I know that when they come from another, higher, ah, yeah, you understand? But that's what makes you Christian. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me tell you something. Can I, share, can I go deeper? One time I was sharing with people and I told them that if a man is overtaken by fault, you who are spiritual, you who are spiritual, restore that man in a spirit of what? Meekness, considering yourself, least thou be tempted. You understand? And I told people, the temptation and fall away of a man who has judged another man wrongly cannot be reversed by... <laughs> you see, let me just say, if I judge somebody when they see, eh? and then I start stealing, Stealing can never leave me until I repent of the judgment. Because that stealing did not come because I was a thief. It came because I judged a thief. Are we together? It is because I what? There is a woman here. Your children are stuck because of how you treated your stepchildren. They are not getting jobs. They're not getting married. Nothing is happening in their lives. You're not going to reverse that cycle until you go back and tell God, I'm sorry, and look for those stepchildren and tell them, I am sorry. Because the reason why your womb is stuck is because you hated, and God loved whom you hated. I'm telling you, it's important. Some of these issues happen. I don't know why, but I've seen it. Haven't you? Professor, haven't you seen it? Are we together? The only way to reverse that cycle <laughs> is not praying for your children. 
he's making peace with these ones you, you put on the wall one day. I don't know who I'm talking to, but me when God tells me something, I have heard. Even you, you know. Praise God. Anyway, back to the point. A certain woman is barren and she's not wise to understand that the problem is not her husband. She has to settle it with God. You understand? She, she has an issue. This man married the first woman, Leah. He produced children in her. He has been with you every day and you're not having children. And you're telling him to give you children or you die. You understand? And then he says, am I God? Now, I want you to see how Jacob is thinking. Jacob is thinking she wants children from her womb. But even once, that's not what she means. <laughs> Jacob thinks eh? it would be understandable if we are talking on that level, but that's not what she thinks. No. The next verse says, <laughs> and she says, Behold my maid Bila, going to her, she shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children by her. Hey, now we actually realize she has given up the hope to have her own children. But she comes to a man who is asking himself, in what's my business with you not having children? Why should you think that I'm the problem? And then you shock him more and tell him, no. Actually, the issue here is not me having children. No, it is you going in my maze to have a child. Now there's another shocker there. And the next verse says, And she gave him Bila, her handmaid, to wife. And Jacob went into her. And Bila conceived and bade Jacob a what? A son. And what happened? And Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore, she called his name who? Dan. Not every Dan is what? Now, and Rachel said, <laughs> And Bila, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bade Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister. You had an issue with your boy, Jacob. Jacob was trickstered by your father, Laban. And then they covered him a fake chick called Le Leah. You get into marriage and then you start to envy Leah for having children because you don't know how children come. And by the people who envy just don't know how. When you see somebody envy another man, they just don't know how. And they're not humble to ask. It's a blood issue. You remember when Cain killed Abel? You remember when Cain killed Abel? The Bible says, and, and God told who? Cain. Where is Abel thy brother? He says, I know not. Am I thy brother's keeper? You remember that experience? But when you fast forward, God told him, don't you know that if you had done what? Right. You would have been acceptable too. You're killing this guy because he has gained favor with me. And by the way, the favor of God is funny. It doesn't fall on the people we want it to fall on. So, he says, if thou doest well, thou shalt not be accepted. If thou does not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be in his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. But you see, the issue was, the reason why you could kill him was because you didn't know that you could also do it. Or you were not humble to ask him how. Rachel was supposed to celebrate Leah. Because what you celebrate, you attract. It's a principle. Women, what you celebrate, you attract. If you say, woman, smart, gamba, darling, you're smart, you have attracted it. That's how women are. I don't know how they think. You see a smarter woman, you don't celebrate her. No, you just say, eh, mm -mm, no, the shoe has refused. Okay, the color of the dress was nice, but the shoe... <laughs> Somebody once told me, a lady one time told me, I hate hammers, they are not nice cars. I told her, when you don't have money. <laughs> when you get money, they look beautiful. I also don't know why. <laughs> they are never constrained by love. So I say that whatever you celebrate, you what? You attract. Rachel became what? Envious. When she became envious of her sister, 
God continued. And let me tell you this. I learned this and I told it one time to a few people. And I told them, if you get envious of somebody you are sure God is blessing, if you're below them, you'll never reach them. If you're above them, they'll find you and overtake you. That's a promise. Examine thine self. Can I say it again? If you envy somebody and you're jealous about somebody's blessing, if you're below them, you'll never catch them. If you are above them, they'll catch up with you and overtake you. That's how God does it. I don't know why. Wherever envy is, the moment, the moment envy comes in your life, compare yourself with that person. You'll be hearing testimonies about them every day. God will, and he will make sure every testimony reaches you. I don't know how God does it. I think that's what makes him faithful. He will make sure every testimony reaches you. So, she envies. And the next thing I know, she goes to the husband with the wrong mind to get a child. Wrong motive. But also, wrong method the motive is wrong in her spirit the process is wrong you understand and the end result is also wrong you see but she's envious anyway Bilal produces and the next thing the second child by the second child we know what was in Rachel's heart with great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister and have prevailed and she called his name who so don't name children such names, okay? If you are named, like, if you should say this, you already had this, okay? But don't get. Now, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> when Leah, look at also this one. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid also. Then I Jacob. This man of God. <laughs> ah, man, the coaster. <laughs> Anyway, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob to wife. Yeah? And, and Zilpah, Leah's maid, bade Jacob a son, and Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name who? God. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bade Jacob a second son, and, and what happened? Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed, and she calls his name who? When you start to see these women, Producing children out of competition the wrong way. You understand? They don't understand what they're doing to themselves. They don't understand what they're doing to themselves. They don't understand what they're doing to themselves. Now, the Bible tells us later on, the Lord remembered who? Rachel. And then he gave her a what? A son. You see... Don't worry. It's God working. I shall just help her. Now listen. Of course there are things that are taking place spiritually. It's one thing when you're dealing with, say, the experience Muse was talking about. Nabal versus who? Nabal versus who? Abigail. Because this is a foolish man marrying a wise woman. You understand? Then there's also an issue here of Rachel marrying Jacob. An unwise woman marrying a wise man. I don't know that you understand. Then there's also a middle ground of those who are judged wrongly. You understand? I'm going to say something very controversial, but I'll qualify it. Many people judge Job's wife. Many people judge Job's wife. Many. Even me, I used to judge her. It was the Holy Spirit that rebuked me. And that is why the gospel is a revelation. If you can never understand that, you can judge the matters of God wrongly. And that's why I told you one time in the last Thursday, that the judgments of God define the depth of God. And the righteousness defines the height. You know, 
I had never preached about it for some reason. The Spirit of the Lord had never led me to really go there. Now I understand why. But every time people judge, they judge Jacob's wife. I mean Job's wife. Why? Because in Job 2, I think from verse 9, she tells him, Owangi, what up? Why don't you cast God and what? And die. Can we go there? Then she said, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Cast God and die. And everyone says, wow, this woman, this woman. And one time, I'm, I'm in this fellowship, and the Holy Spirit tells me, do you realize God, I, God, never judged that woman? All Job's friends saw everything wrong. I mean, they, they, all Job's friends, the scriptures tell us, they spoke wrong about God. And God judged them and told Job that before I restore, you pray for your friends. But among the people to be prayed for, for having judged wrongly, the wife wasn't among. Now the delusion is because she's not qualified among them which are perfect. Have you considered my servant Job? You understand? Who is righteous? But you see, don't forget the two are one. Okay, you'll not understand. <laughs> but when she, she says, cut God and die, are you hearing me? Many of us say, eh, that was the wrong woman to have. She had misled the guy. Supposing Job as what? It is because the societies in which we've been raised have taken lightly the things women go through because they look to be obvious to us. You understand? We take certain things, what? Lightly. Don't forget that when they say that Job lost ten children, these were all her children. This is a woman who had lost ten children in, in minutes. And she has to be there every day watching a man who is suffering in pain and anguish, and there is nothing she can do. And she feels the easiest way to ease his pain is to die quickly. But we never look at that side of... Anyway, you won't understand me. Let me tell you, Children are more painful to women. Me, I know it. Even if I say me, I love my child, I don't think I can love my child because for us what we do is just deposit. Munyambe, <laughs> women, don't be quiet. It doesn't mean that I don't love my child. I do, I do, I do, I do. But I can't love. In fact, that's why I don't understand a woman who who doesn't love her child? I don't understand that version of the Bible. I don't understand it. It, 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 it. You mean, nine months you're carrying something inside. You can't even sleep on your belly. You understand? Even when you get slain, they hold you like this. Nine months you like this. You understand? You're holding one what? Child. Nine months. You eat food in one night and your stomach gets bloated and you feel uncomfortable. One night. But somebody has a stomach. Nine months. Day one born. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then they swell, they unswell, they. Then like a kid wakes up and tells you, Mommy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? This woman had lost ten children. I would not judge a woman who makes any statement after losing ten children. I cannot. I can't judge a woman who has lost ten children. So, that is why the next verse, Job said, listen to, to the imputed righteousness. He said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women. But he didn't say you were foolish. He couldn't tell his wife she's foolish. He said, my wife, you're speaking like a foolish, but you're not foolish. You can't be foolish. That woman wasn't foolish. So, if God regarded her not foolish and Job regarded 
are not foolish. Who are you, common man? <laughs> you know? You understand? That's very important for you to know. Very important for you to know. So, me, I don't judge that woman. Praise God. I don't know how it feels like to lose 10 children and look after somebody who is in anguish every night. You understand? Years ago, I know a man who fell sick and he got cancer in his head and he's, he was in too much pain that he asked for that injection which kills, what, I don't know what they call it, doctors. You know, there are some things that are not in the scriptures, so they are so hard to... to I would get her. I would get her. And, and I, 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 I witnessed this guy asking for that injection. And his wife consented. You can think she killed the man. She didn't. The pain the man was going through was too much. We don't know the boy, which part of the body they were. I don't know what it feels like to wake up and I'm in a mirror and my whole body is filled with boils. If a pimple can make me lose peace, that passes all understanding, that should guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And then you find something. Like, you, you know, what about boils? You know? So are we together? So, let's come back to Rachel. There's a lesson I need to show us here. And so, the scriptures tell us, like you've all read, the Lord remembers her and gives her a child. What was the name of the child? Come on, what was the name of the child? Joseph. The moment Rachel produced, Jacob said, you know what, Laban, <laughs> release me with my family. You understand? That's what he was waiting for. He didn't want to suffer loss. You understand? He feared loss. He's not like some musician. For him, he what? He feared loss. Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto my own place and unto my country. Why? Because he had worked in full and the, the, the rewards which were the wives he received, they came with fruit. You understand? You understand? Life continues. In the release, the scriptures tell us that Rachel asks Laban, do we have an inheritance? Rachel. And the next thing we know, one time I read that in the olden Jewish cultures, ancient uh, demonic worship, children used to take certain points of contact from their fathers, girls, you know. They used to take stuff with the mind of having um, as points of contact of the inheritance of the father with the mind that if you've taken something from your father's house you understand it doesn't matter what happens these things will always come back to you you understand but Laban had not given them much isn't it and you know I don't know about what, what he was up to did he have sons I don't know if he did then what was wrong with this woman so anyway the story is you remember she stole something she asks them, they are an inheritance for us in our father's house. You know? Of course, there is something already wrong. You understand? There is something already wrong. If you begin from, from the beginning of how we perceive Rachel, there is a way she doesn't understand that it is God she needs. You see Jacob bringing her to remembrance. You need God. No, I don't need God. I can do it this way. Go in my maid, Bila. You understand? Same thing, they are going to be released. And she's asking for inheritance. And she still doesn't understand. All she needs is God. It doesn't matter what you go with. All you need is God. Tell anybody all you need is God. Tell them again. So she has not registered in her spirit that all she needs is God. You see, I also need to liberate some, some people here. Not the wrong way, but it's important that we do. When Bishop was mentioning about some women who say, me, I am single, eh? and I don't want my child to be raised alone. I almost wanted to come and tell him, okay, 
Talk about also those ones who say, for them they have never wanted to have their children, my children from different fathers, so she speaks on the wrong guy. <laughs> Let me sit here. Look, look. Look, wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay. You, you have an issue with a guy. You, you screwed up. We understand. You produced what? A child. God or Daniel. It's okay. You understand? Now, we understand that level. Then you get to a point and tell me that I have never wanted to have children in different men. You understand? So what do I do? I speak on the wrong guy to fulfill the promise of God. Listen. Let me say it in Uganda. I repeat Bishop's words. Dust yourself up and move on. That's also another group of people. Why? Because you fear, like again you said, to be a single mother and then you enter relationships when you have to first present your... Yeah. I know people like that. I also know the lady. For her, the first day of the day, she tells you, I'm lame, by the way. Don't. Don't. You see, I'm not saying don't disclose your child. I'm only saying that is not the conversation of the first day of meeting a man. So, Already the fact that I didn't notice should tell you. Okay, you'll understand later. But okay, it's okay to bring it later, but let it not be the... I am... You understand, Kogamba? Me, I am... It can be misunderstood. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So, then I see this, this situation with people like that, and I see a problem where... You see, years ago, there's a lady who had a child, a little girl, and I met them in a meeting in Kawempe back in those years, and then the child was about five years and she was a girl. And then they broke up with a guy, and then she became born again, and then she started to seek God. In one of those days, she comes to me and tells me, Apostle, the guy who I broke up with, you remember, dear, he's back. Like the Terminator, he's back. So I said, okay, he's back what? To do what? He's back in my life. Asked her, are you born again? And she told me, yes. Asked her, is he born again? She said, no. And I asked her, so now, what business do you have of bringing back a guy? Banange, to, to look okay. To look okay. Listen, women, munyambe, to look okay. If you know the guy, come on. I asked her, is he born again? She no. What does the Bible say? We do not be unequally. Ani Actually, I love the scriptures. Unequally. The Bible said don't be equally yoked. No, it says unequal. Already you're not equal with a guy. You understand? There is, there is an excuse for someone who entered the relationship when both of you are in the world and then you got born again later. For you, we understand you. And then you're in marriage. Don't leave. The Bible says, you sanctify the husband, okay? There's, there's an allowance in the scriptures that allows you to sanctify that fellow. But I'm talking of people who are not in wedlock. They are not committed by marriage. Are you following? And then I am seeing, yeah, the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. You understand? Or else your children will be unclean, but now they are holy. Now, we, 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 we get to a point where this Okay, you, you, you were dating and you were not both unbelievers and then you broke up. Dating is not marriage. Even if you have children, it's not marriage. You understand? Now, you've broken up and then you're coming together as if you, you are married. You understand? Now, here is a challenge. So, she, she comes and tells me the same thing and then she tells me, yeah, I know he's not born again, but I don't want to have Children in many men. Me, I want one man. He's the love of my life. <laughs> I tell her now. You know when somebody is over, overtaken, you cannot talk to them in a sensible way. So I said, okay, now, look, let's agree this. Let me and you pray, and God talk to you and me about this issue. Can we pray about it? We agreed, granted, we went to prayer. I went to God, I said, God, 
me, you don't even need to waste your anointing to send me a vision. Because me, I know where this is heading. Talk to the woman, Muyambi. The next day she comes and tells me, I dreamt when this guy had a lizard on him, the whole body, lizard, the whole body. So I told her, so kati oyagala chimu lizard. Oyagala kuwasa lizard. Family on lizard. You want to marry the lizard? Anyway, no, like seriously, I told her, so what business do you have with? Apostle, I've listened, I'm sorry. After six months, I hear she's pregnant. Again of lizard. You understand? Listen, 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 listen. Here is the sad part. She came to my house, in my home there in Kawempe, and she told me that I went to Antenanto and I realized I was HIV positive. I was cut. I was cut. I said, my God, what did sin want? Can so get Muruganda? Banga, what we mean to be Kuva, Konga, Mukama, Kuonya, Buonya. Let me say it again. There are some people who are out of your life, but woman, God is trying to save you from something. Let go! They are not your gods. Give me child or I die. He is not your God. Let go. You don't know what God is saying. Oh, I can't live without you. You can, I swear. You can. In Him, you live. In Him, you move. In Him, you have your own being. Why can't? How can't you? No, you can't. I said you can't. And that's when I realized that some of the things which should go out of your life, let them go. Let them go. I said let them go. You don't know what God is saving you from. Let go. Let go. If the mistake was there, let go. I'm not saying kill each other. No. Be at peace. Love. Godly love. But let go and know that this is not where I'm going. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. But if you get to a point, like, like Bishop said, and then you reach a certain situation, and, and by now it's women be liberated. And let me say this thing. I want to preach, but there are things I can't, I can't leave behind. Be liberated. Be liberated. Your husband is your husband, but he's not God. Yeah, that boyfriend is, yes, but he's not God. He's not God. He's not God. He's not God. So if I leave him, Mama, I won't sleep. <laughs> Mama, how many women here have slept after? I wish they can put up your hands and you understand that they went through hell, highway and water. They are still smiling, standing and believing God for the next chapter. But they are still alive. They are not far. See what so say. And they are okay. They are not wishing for the past to come back in their lives. No. They are, the one thing they look at, like Paul says, is to forget the past and look at eh, Makaye. What is said before them? Yeah, I don't know who I'm helping. I can't. How can't you? And he's an unbeliever. And... And you're born again. I don't understand how you can betray God. How can you betray God? How can you betray God? How can you betray God and say you can't live without an unbeliever? I don't understand you. Do you know how expensive God is? Do you know what he can do? Anyway, I'm almost finishing. Rachel! If you're Rachel, you're not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking to the one of the Bible. Praise God. So she didn't have an A in the name. So, we get to a point and we see that there is a wisdom this woman never what? Never had. Fast forward, Genesis 35, 18. You're going to love this. 
She gets the point. Let's begin from 17. Yeah, 18. Yeah, 17. The Bible says that it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Huh? And the next verse tells us, And it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died, yeah? that she called his name Ben-Oni. You understand? Now, the word Ben-Oni is translated as, I have begotten him in too much sorrow and I died. You understand? Are you hearing me? She became so sick in her last end, and then she was about to die, you know, departing in the Amplified, when she was in hard labor, thank you. The midwife said to her, do not be afraid, you shall have this son also. The next verse says, and her soul was departing, for she died. She called his name Benoni, son of my sorrow. I produced him in sorrow, and I died. But his father said, uh-uh. I don't want this child to grow up. He says, his father called him Benjamin. That is son of my right hand. Now listen, the woman, when she was in sorrow, she was going to die, she said, Call him Benoni. 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 Okay. Benoni. You understand? And then she what? She dies. And when she dies, the guy said, No. I am Jacob, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. Our roots don't confess those things. They don't think that way. They don't keep certain stories in the lineage. If, if you're calling your child Benoni, you call them Benoni, you understand? But I'm going to call my child the right, the son of my right hand, Benjamin. See how a man of this, this woman should not. I think that's why she died. Because I think they were going to argue over the name. Are you hearing me? Maybe she didn't know what she married. Hallelujah. Maybe she didn't know who she got married to. No. Understand this. The man she got married to, God met his grandfather. What would God is funny? He, he met the man's grandfather, Abraham, and told him that I shall fill your seed and they shall be as the what? The stars in the sky. Are you hearing me? That's how many they shall be. They will be uncountable. All the stand on the sea. So. Now, if I've told Abraham, and I tell people this, if I tell Abraham that you're going to, your children, your seed is going to be like the stars in the heaven or as the sand which is on the sea. I don't think Abraham should worry when he gets a barren woman. Because this is deeper than her barrenness. And I also hope the woman should not worry if she's married to Abraham. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. That's why it's important you marry Abraham. Because if you marry a guy without a promise, listen, even if he doesn't have a house, Nenga, he has a promise. Even if he doesn't have a job, Nenga, when you sit down to talk, the guy looks like he has a vision. That's okay. Get married to vision. Don't get married to cars. Get married to vision. Tell your neighbor, don't get married to DVD players and mobile phones and plots of land. Get married to a guy who has a promise. Today men get nice perfumes and then they bypass girls. And they say, you understand? No! We want to get days back when women get attracted by prayer. You come in church and find a guy saying, Makatala, Rabaka, and then you say, yeah, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. <laughs> you just see the can and you say, wow, no. Bibereri. Those ones are for women who didn't come for virtuous women. You understand? The one who, can, who wants to get you say. That's why they deceive girls. The guy deceives a car. Oh, oh, Jesus, I met a man who was a car. You know? Listen, let the guy pack his Lamborghini Diablo. Let him put it there or Ferrari, whatever. Then you ask him, what do you see in the spirit?
what has God told you. Because if I'm barren, you can fix me. But if I am barren and you don't have a vision, you look for another woman. Come on, women, help me here. If I am lame, you'll make me straight. If I'm talkative, you'll set me up. If I'm loud, you'll cool me down. If I am up, you'll soften me. But I need a man with a vision. Because if you don't have a vision, we perish. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Young girls, don't just marry. Eh? Now I speak as an apostle. Don't just what? Marry. No. He must have a vision. Let me tell you. What is the problem with being lame when the man has an anointing to make you walk? Uh -uh. What is the problem of being blind in one eye when he has a glory that can put back the eye or see the eye up straight? What is the problem? But imagine he doesn't have the anointing and all he has are cards and mobile phones. Which women with straight eyes can see also? Tell your neighbor, Salawolero. Turn to the other one, tell him also, Salawolero. Now, let me also go to the men in the house. Also you, when you're choosing, don't leave. No, no, no. Pastor Nixon, Pastor Nixon, the story of Abigail, the Bible says she came to David. She had a fool at home. You remember the scripture? She had a fool at home. Fool. Yeah? The guy tells him, I want you to share some meat. Because when your young men were sharing the sheep, we protected them. The fool refused. Then a young man comes to her and tells her that they are David is coming with 400 men. Are you hearing me? And these 400 men are going to kill your fool. You understand? And the whole family. What do you do? Now, you realize, this, even if you go back to the fool, he won't understand. Because he's foolish. So what does she do? She carries food and takes to who? David. Are we together? When she carries food and takes it to David, and then she pleads with the man, she tells him both. Like he said, your blood is going to be on you. You're going to be a king. In fact, if you read the scriptures, she called David my master. She didn't call him David. Uh -uh. Things in the spirit had already switched. Husband was fool. David was master. There's, there's a Michael who is up there seeing the man worship God and she's despising. She's saying, Look at David. There is a married woman who is calling this guy master. Hey. And, and Michael becomes barren. Thank you. She never produces. Michael. God, no, because God can't, can't, he can't promote his seed uh -huh. through that kind of person. The seed of God can't be produced through Michael. Mm. Mm. Now, look at the issue. She, she goes to, 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 to David, tells him, my master, when you're king, you will feel bad that you kill this fool. Preserve him. God, God, God killed the guy in 10 days. You understand? David knew. He said, no, this is the one. Hey, Abigail is the one. You understand? Now, men also. Why do you go for rituals when Abigail? I don't know why, what, what is in men. You understand? I don't know also what is in us. But God deliver us. Because... How, how do you leave Abigail and go for... Give me children or I die as though you're God. I, 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 you understand what I'm saying? The scriptures tell us now. Go back to that story. I want to show you something funny. Eh? And there's something funny here, but I'm going to prove it. Now, the next verse says, Abigail came to Nabal. Read the message version. When Abigail got home, she found Nabal presiding over a huge banquet. He was in high spirits, very drunk. The fool. She didn't tell him anything of what she had done until morning. Next verse. But in the morning after Nabal had sobered up, she told him the whole what? Story. Right then, there he had a heart attack and fell into a coma. 
Now, you, you, Banaya women, I'm going to show you something, men, 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 men. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something, men, never forget this. Now, what does the next verse say? And about 10 days later, God finished him off and he died. What does the next verse say? When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, ha. Ah. Okay. Keep me from an evil act and let Nabal's evil boomerang back on him. Then David sent for what? To tell her that he wanted that for. Now, men, men, watch this. What does the next verse say? David's servant went to Abigail at Camel with the message, David sent us to bring you to marry him. Look at the next verse. She got up and then bowed down face to the ground saying, I'm your servant ready to go. <laughs> to do anything you want. I'll even wash your feet. What do you want? What do you want? Because they love smart men. That's why if you find a woman who loves the fool, I don't understand. Okay, anyway. Maybe it was not intended. You, you entered a relationship and realized it was Nabal. You understand? But, but, but you see how they see. You, you understand? Immediately. I'm your servant. Do you want me to wash your feet? What do you want me to do? you want me to jump up? How high? What do you want to tell me? You understand? Next verse says, <laughs> Abigail didn't linger. She got on her donkey with her five maids in attendance, went to the messengers to David immediately. She didn't waste time. She didn't waste time. Men say, I carry wisdom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't have a Nabal spirit on me. So get it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can't have a Nabal spirit. In the name of Jesus. Even you, cameraman, put up your hand. Put your hand up. Say, in the name of Jesus. I can't have a Nabal spirit. <laughs> now listen to me. So I realize, lately, I see more Abigail married to Nabal than David. But I also see some Rachel married to Jacob. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Now, let's go back to what I wanted to finish up. So, the, the man she got married to, and, and, and that's the thing, that is the thing. You must understand. You must understand. See, the, the man she got married to was, I mean, even God, God was not afraid to say, I am his God. You understand? He, he said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whether you're barren or what, the guy you're married to or you're marrying is what? Has an issue with me. We, we are tight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, number one, you're not even supposed to work. That's why, let me tell you. If you're not sure of the man, don't marry. Wait. Allow God. Allow God to, to deal with you. You understand? Because you'll enter a house and expect honey and milk without bees and cows. You enter the house, there are no bees, there are no cows. Then you start building your family from there. You understand? And every day, the other day I was counseling a man who said, my wife, she, she, she doesn't see me there. It is because, it is because, it is because. I told him, neighbors, when you guys were there doing the electricity, <laughs> did you tell her what you see? You understand? Even you, when you go out on dates, ask for vision. Don't ask for this thing. Where do you live? That's the name of your father. Ah, Olawachi, Mukatonda, Olawachi. You understand? What do you see in God? So that you can realize where the guy is wired in Jacob or Mammon, whatever he is, then you enter it when you know that this is where I'm going. Let me tell you, I have seen women who are in marriage and it's like a prison. Because when she entered there, there was no divine purpose. Now as you start to grow closer to God and then you start to hear someone and then they start to hit you left, right and center. Then you start to see the other guy is in a different world, he's, he's roaming, you understand? Like, like those, those droids that were uh, in the air in front of you. understand? You know, the deeper you grow in God, the more the guy detests. I don't really like the way you go. Now why are you going in those meetings? What do you go to find there? Hey, why are you in You shouldn't have gone there in the first place. But anyway, it's You understand? We understand. We are praying for you. That the Lord deliver you. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? But do you know how painful it is for you to draw closer to God and your partner grows distant? When you are in the world, you are close. 
When you found God, they started to what? Divine purpose. Now some demons are living silently. You understand? Then you get into a marriage and it is like a prison. You're in there. You can't come out. You can't tell somebody that I want to come out because you, you are a testimony. When you enter church, everyone says, Mama, those two are married. <laughs> but if you want to tell, that married woman can tell you, woman, now you have seen better. You advise young girls not to hurry. Why? Because divine purpose is important. How can two walk together unless they agree? Where is the place of agreement if we can't share the altar? Where is it? I mean, if we can't go together to God and talk to God together, uh, you understand? I've seen people whose the wife prays in one church, the husband prays in the other. The guy prays, he looks in the nose to pray, you understand? The wife comes to Fanero. Because, see, you understand? He has a black sky, you're speaking in tongues. The guy has a skull like this, you understand? Now, I also want to pray for that kind of person. You feel that your marriage, you're like in a prison. I pray for you honestly from the bottom of my heart today. God fix it for his name's sake. Because I know what it feels like. I've, I've cancelled people. I know what it feels like. Some people want to die. I was cancelling a woman who wanted to commit suicide because she was tired of living in a marriage and she was too Christian to divorce. Why? Because in the first place we entered in passion, not vision, not purpose. Right, if you're here and you realize that you're not on the same page with your husband regarding divine purpose, tell God this evening, fix something. Just fix it. I, I, I made mistakes, I know, but help me. Help me. Help me, God. Help me. You understand? Because how are the two of you working together when there is no place of agreement? You're actually in the same house, but you're not married anymore. You're in a relationship. And then I, these, these girls I've seen also, the guy has already chucked you because you're over praying and you're wasting your time. Listen, if they've chucked you for prayer, eh? listen, if they've chucked you for prayer, let me give it to you straight as it is. You're too foolish to stay. <laughs> for nothing can separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus. I, I mean, you chuck me because I over pray. Come on, go. Go, go. Because listen, you're getting in between me and the God I married before we met. You're getting in between the God I married before we met. Before we met. This guy was there for me before you came in the picture. By the way, settle it in your head. You understand? Settle it in your head. Never get between a woman and her God. Man of God. But on that side also women, never get between a man and his God. Don't, don't seem to, 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 to you understand? You, you, because me, I understand the part of men of God. You understand? And majorly when you're a preacher, like some of us. You understand? You saw the guy going for door to door every weekend. You saw him in Fanel every Thursday. Monday he was in Afrostone. Tuesday he was... That's his life. You understand? He's married to God before he marries you. Now you get into marriage. We need to spend time together. Amanda, we have to hear mama. <laughs> Listen, look for a spirit-filled, tongue-speaking, demon-chasing doctor. You understand? Don't mess up the man of God because that's how he knows. You understand? You, 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 you came in church, you found the girl in a corner, she was not talking to you, you found her praying in a very crazy way, Makaya, Makaya, you get married to her, and then you tell her you're shouting. Did you find her quiet? Answer me, did he find you quiet? No! Honey, you over get slain. Listen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you want me to do? To stay indifferent? Women, help me here. If the guy found you, you shout a bit. But sometimes when the gospel enters you, you become a bit crazy. That's who you are. 
He must understand that sometimes you want to pray the whole night. I mean, you must be clear. Those are things of now we are married. You are a woman of God. You don't need to shout. Now, there is this delusion I'm seeing. It's crazy. I mean, women get born again and then they become carnal when they are married. Why? Because I can't shout. Now I'm married. Got it? No, you can shout and still stay married. This one here. I'm not spoiling you. I'm just telling you the truth. You were in love with Jesus when you were young. You used to shout for him. When you got married to this guy, he became your God. He's controlling how you pray. He's controlling how you fast. He's controlling how you stand in the service. You have to sit a certain way because now you're a married woman. You're living by example. Come on, excuse me. Excuse me. Jesus is worthy. And if you're a woman and your husband is a problem, come and report them to Bishop. Bishop knows how to deal with those men who refuse you to shout and speak in tongues. Bishop has that anointing. It's the same thing with men also. When you enter a marriage with a manga, you know for him sometimes Shumukuba and Azira said, Don't even say anything. Look this side and also say from your corner and say we are one. You understand? Don't listen. Don't. Don't try to change his worship. Because if you change his worship, you'll frustrate your marriage. Small things affect marriage. When you change somebody's worship. That's when we their God. If the guy has to become naked, just say he's my husband. Let me also come and just cover him. You understand? But, but if, you, if you change the man's worship, you will never produce. You will never produce. Now, let me finish. The son, Benoni. Look at how she's in a marriage of a man of lineage who has a God. And then she gets to the point of getting to die. And then she said, no. Let it be remembered that I produced in sorrow. And the man says, no. The lineage where we come from, we don't keep those stories. They're just indifferent. In our lineage, I cannot keep a child and always raise him up telling him that he produced you in sorrow. That's not how we think. We are not of them which draw back to perdition. No. We are of them which hold on to believing and to the saving of the soul. Even if things are not happening in your marriage, still stay positive. You understand? When they ask you, how is your marriage? You tell them it's rocky, baby. You understand? Even if they slapped you last night, the communication of your faith should become effectual by acknowledging every new thing which is in you, which is in Christ. I don't care how this kid is coming out and the situation you're going through. Stay connected to truth and your proclamation must be true. The women who just know how to talk their problems. Hmm. Ah, now my husband. Hmm. What can I tell you? You understand? One time I made a statement, and I know many of you will get stoned. But this is the truth. If your husband never fails you, take responsibility. Hi. Now if the man has changed. No, 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 no. Woman, woman. Go back to the scripture. You are helper. You are helper suitable. Because your helper suitable. But he's a man, he can decide. No. A man cannot decide what he wants. You've just not yet understood that you came out of him. Your, your husband can't know you more than you know him. Come on, let me say it again. You came out. You understand? It means that w when he was busy understanding what's outside, for you were inside studying the, the script, this creature. You understand how he thinks, how he sleeps, everything. You understand? Because you came out. That's why I tell people, if you are in a place of marriage and then you realize you, you're a woman and you feel you didn't come out of a man, don't waste his time. Ah, uh -uh, okay. Even don't you do, don't waste your time. And if you're a man and you look at a woman and you realize she didn't come out of you, because if somebody come out of you, they think the way you think. They feel after the things you feel after. 
If she wants to go to the Atlantic and your dream is in Madagascar, brother, I understand there is no middle ground. Zamunda is a movie. It's not real. You can't reconcile that. You are either on the same page or you didn't come out. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Listen, the Bible says God entered Adam and then he what? He removed him. That means before God removed you out of the guy, you are busy studying him like a specimen. You know why some of you women are not married? It's because you don't even know how he looks like. Instead of taking time to study. I don't know whether I'm making sense, Bishop. If they are praying to God for marriage, instead of praying to be made wives, there are women who want to get married, yet God, God wants them wives married. Because he that finds a wife, not a woman. And the transition from woman to wife requires that you first enter the superstar, study him left, right and center, understand everything spiritually. So by the time you get married, you know I came out, I can help him. I mean, every car that breaks down, they have to open it. Every car. Can we open the bonnet? Can we check under? Listen, you are in the bonnet, you are under. You are in the fuel pump, you are in the exhaust. You are inside the engine oil. Come on, come on, come on. How can you say that the man has failed? How can he fail you? If he failed you, it's only simple. You didn't come out of him. Ben only. Jacob tells her, look, I know that I love you, Rachel, but our kind doesn't name children that way. You need help. Praise God. Now speak to God. <laughs> speak to Jesus. Come on. Come on, speak to God. Come on, come on. I have two minutes here. Speak to God.
I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that the entrance of your wife brings life. And it gives us understanding to the simple. I believe you're delivering somebody. I believe you're healing heart. I believe you're restoring. I believe you're changing. I believe you're increasing. I believe you're restoring. I believe you're rejuvenating, resuscitating, reviving relationships in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that you've given us insight in the name of Jesus about the course that we must follow regarding our future in the name of Jesus. We learn in the name of Jesus Christ that wisdom is ours. You've been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we carry your wisdom, because we carry your glory, we carry your power. Women walk out of this meeting changed. Men walk out of this meeting changed.